So today we're going to talk about Vectra disassembly and reassembly. Uh, this will go and cover the Vectra S series, M series, and L series pumps. So what we have here is a Vectra M2 that we're going to take apart today. It's very straightforward, very easy, and we're just going to point out a couple of things to look out for when you're potentially taking the pump apart, uh, whether it be for cleaning or routine maintenance and inspection. So the first thing that we want to go ahead and do, um, we're going to go ahead and spin off our color and coupling kit that we have pre-installed. Now, keep in mind, you may have uh, hard plumbing uh, or soft plumbing with a barb and screen kit potentially installed. So you can pull those components out as well. Um, make sure you go ahead and inspect them for any kind of cracks or any kind of debris buildup. Uh, if there is any, you wanna go ahead and get that cleaned out. So once we have these removed, we can go ahead and just check them out, make sure there aren't any cracks, make sure they aren't broken at all. Um, as long as they're in good shape and they're clean, we can go ahead and set those aside. Um, again, we wanna inspect our O-rings, make sure the O-rings are not ripped, torn, or broken, as that can cause a leak. Um, if you need replacements, you can always contact us directly to get them. Um, so as long as the O-rings look to be in good condition, uh, the next thing we wanna do is remove our volute pump. So we'll go ahead and remove the volute from the pump body in itself. There are four screws that you can see. They are a five millimeter Allen key that needs to be removed in order to remove this to expose the impeller assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. You wanna make sure you'll do, you're will do. you doing this on a large enough tabletop because as you can see, uh, some of the nuts like to fall out. You don't wanna lose those. So as they drop, you wanna have a good surface to make sure you catch those pieces of hardware. And then you can go ahead and set them to the side. So once the nuts are removed, also want to, whoop, to go ahead and remove the screws from the front, set those aside as well. So once you have this cover off, what you'll wanna do, um, again, like I said, if you haven't already checked the O-rings, it's a good time to go ahead and do that. Uh, you also wanna flip this over and make sure that the inlet and the outlet are nice and clean and unobstructed. Uh, we don't want anything trapped or caught in there that's not supposed to be there. So make sure everything's good to go there, and then you can set that aside. And we'll move on to the impeller assembly and the motor body. So the next step that we have here is to go ahead, this is just a magnetic impeller assembly. You'll see it free wheels as it's intended to do. So you can go ahead and grab this and just pull. It'll come right out of the actual motor assembly. Um, you'll see there's an O-ring here. Again, same as the, uh, the volute. We wanna go ahead and check the O-ring, make sure it's not ripped or torn at all. Uh, as long as it's not and it's in good shape, we can go ahead and set that aside. The next thing that we wanna do, um, Take a good look at your impeller assembly. Make sure that the actual impeller wheel, make sure all the blades are in good shape. Make sure it is really good and clean. Um, there is a little clip here at the top that actually holds the impeller wheel onto the rest of the magnetic um, drive shaft assembly. Um, make sure that that clip is obviously still there and holding the impeller where it needs to be in place. Uh, on the flip side, we just wanna make sure overall that the impeller assembly is really good and clean. Um, make sure nothing looks cracked, broken, or damaged in the event that it is, um, or maybe this, this is, is broken into multiple pieces. If that happens to be the case, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we can definitely help you out with that. So after you have the impeller removed, we can move on to the actual motor block assembly itself. Um, again, make sure in here is clean. That's where your actual impeller is going to sit and lock into place. Make sure that's good and clean. Take a look at the inside of the motor chamber. You wanna make sure that there's not any kind of slimy or calcified debris internally inside of that motor chamber. And you also wanna make sure that the bearing that you can likely see down in the back of the motor is clean and unobstructed. That bearing actually sits right here on your impeller assembly. So if you feel this at the bottom, it's very smooth. It's machined to be like this so that it rides nice on the bearing on the back of the motor. So in the event that you remove this impeller assembly, and sometimes that bearing has a tendency to come out with the impeller, that's okay. It's not anything to fear. If it does come out, you can remove it from the impeller if you wanna go ahead and clean it. Um, if you do, just make sure that while you're doing that, that, that the uh, bearing assembly 
um, when you pull it off, you want to make sure that you set that down in a way that you remember how it came off of the impeller. It is directionally specific, so you can put it in backwards. Uh, that will cause the motor to stall or not work properly. So you want to make sure that if you do, if it happens to come out or you do happen to remove it, that it gets reinstalled the correct direction. So after we've inspected everything internally, we make sure that the inside of the motor chamber is good. The, impe the um, impeller's bearing is seated and situated correctly down in the bottom of the motor assembly. We can then go ahead and start to reassemble the motor. So we will place our O-ring like so. Keep in mind this sometimes takes two hands, possibly a third helping hand if you need it. You'll go ahead and realign the three pins that are on the underside of the impeller. And that will hold your O-ring into place as so. And once you have the impeller reinstalled, you can go ahead and then return the volute to the top of the motor. So we'll go ahead, make sure all of our holes are lined up, make sure that is secure, and then we can start adding our hardware back into the motor. And what I'd recommend is to just start them ever so gently. You don't want to just install one screw and torque it all the way down when you are putting it back together. Um, that's that's going to make it a bit more difficult to get the rest of the screws into place. Um, and it may cause uh, the front cover to not um, actually seat the way it should and could potentially cause leaks. So I recommend to just get each screw started um, just gently and that will allow you to uh, seat the impeller assembly and the volute assembly to the motor uh, the correct way without any leaking. So when we go ahead and we tighten these down, uh, I like to use a star pattern. I am using a drill here today for demonstration purposes, but um, most of the time, if you're at home, the easiest thing to use and probably the safest thing to use would be uh, an Allen key set. Um, just because you only, when tightening these, you only want to go about hand tight. They don't need to be overly torqued. You don't need to use a high power drill to do so. Um, if you do, you, you, like I said, you're liable to potentially uh, crack this cover, uh, which you don't want to happen. So um, for demonstration purposes, I'm using this, but um, if you have a five millimeter Allen key wrench set, such as this, um, it's going to be the safest thing to use. They just need to be hand tight or hand snug down um, just so that you don't crack anything or break anything. And again, you'll see as I go to tighten them down, I'm using just a simple star pattern to ensure that this cover is seated nice and evenly all the way around. Um, if you go in a circle, that also uh, potentially could cause the pump to leak. So as I said, I like to use that uh, star method in order to have them properly torqued. And once they're torqued down, the last thing you need to reinstall is going to be your collar and coupling kit. You'll just spin them on in a clockwise motion, snug them down, and reattach any necessary plumbing. And that will conclude our Vectra disassembly and reassembly.